Ask anyone in politics, each year is unprecedented and each election is the most important one. But the politics in the Northern Mariana Islands has been especially unprecedented and even more critical than ever. The political pressure reaching a tipping point. There are about 100 candidates running for office, but all eyes will perhaps be on the gubernatorial race. Seen my residents will have three choices. To the people of the Commonwealth, I stood beside you guys, worked for you guys, and I'll continue to work for you. Thank you, Dr. Susmasi, for all the love and the blessings. Governor Ralph Torres withstanding the political typhoon surrounding his impeachment by the House of Representatives this year, becoming the second governor in NMI history to be impeached. But he's the first to undergo a Senate impeachment trial, where they ultimately did not pass any of the articles of impeachment related to his first-class travel, spending, and contempt charge for failing to appear before a legislative committee after he was subpoenaed. In May, we asked Torres how the impeachment will impact the election. Without going back and forth on what the House did and what they didn't do and so forth, um, they did their action. The Senate did their action. I respect both, both houses. Um, and we continue to do what we need to do. We have a party behind. Uh, we have our candidates. And we have issues that we continue to address. Um, and uh, I'll be here. I'll continue to do what we need to do to give up this person. Torres selecting sitting Senator Vinny Sablon as his running mate. Sablon recused himself from participating and taking a vote in the impeachment trial that could have ended his running mate's re-election bid. I'm looking forward for a, a healthy relationship with not only the governor, and I do have that healthy relationship with, with him now um, as a sitting senator and, and as, as uh, um, he is the governor. But I also have, um, you know, good working relationships with everyone else here in the legislature and everyone else in the executive branch. The governor has, 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 has been able to, to weather those storms and continue to um, ensure that, that services are provided in the midst of this pandemic. And, and, and that's where the resilience comes from. We are in campaign season, you know, uh, um, you know, a lot of things are sensitive and, you know, people are, 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 you know, really rooting for their own candidates. But, you know, um, my message is, um, you know, we want to continue to do good. We want to continue to, like I said, to pave the way for, um, for our kids when it's their turn to lead. The politics here is not new. Sablon, who's now a Republican after running as an independent, would fill the seat left vacant on the ticket after sitting Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios turned independent after running as a Republican with Torres after a bitter political divorce and Palacios himself testifying against Torres in the House's investigation. Throughout my political career, I've always been a Republican. Um, so uh, I will hold myself and I'll continue to be a Republican and a proud Republican for that matter. Palacios is mounting a challenge with his running mate, sitting Saipan Mayor David Apatang, their ticket splintering the party as traditionally Republican legislators up for re-election now call themselves independents. The party itself uh, has, you know, for lack of a better word, lost its way. Uh, a lot of people uh, that have been Republicans all their lives have uh, looked at it and said, this is not my Republican Party. This is not the Republican Party that we have nurtured for years and supported for years. And so people are veering away from, from the, the leadership, not from the party itself. In October, he responded to critics who say he's no different from Torres. I wish people understand that the role of the lieutenant governor is not to, quote unquote, babysit the governor. Uh, I'm not going to be, the, 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 the lieutenant governor is not supposed to be doing that. And why am I being blamed for, for not calling out a lot of those revelations I wasn't aware of? And the infighting and bickering and what might be pushed aside as old politics is met with a historic ticket waged by the Democratic Party of the NMI. For the first time in NMI history, two women are running for governor and lieutenant governor. House Democrats Tina Sablon and Leila Staffler say they want to give CNMI voters a true choice on the ballot. Exploring, but we've also done a lot of community organizing together. And part of the next steps forward that we really want to um, focus on are making sure that we get the input of our community on the priorities and things that we need to make sure we keep in mind going ahead because 
Um, change is a is a big step, and when you're managing change, it really helps to get your community buy-in. Representative Tina Sablon was a former longtime journalist and is a major influential figure in the impeachment of Governor Torres. Layla and I are, are ready to move forward with presenting uh, our vision of, of what government could and should be like. So what, you know, we talk about good governance, what does that mean? It means fairness, it means honesty, it means fiscal responsibility. Um, it, it means, you know, in a lot of ways, like like everything that we learned in, in these last two years during the, during the JJO investigation, but also even before that with the special committee, um, it, we were looking at all kinds of examples of how not to run a government, how not to take care of public funds, and also, you know, how how not to take care of the people who work in government. Um, and, and so we are presenting a, a much different and more positive vision of, of what leadership in government should be. In November, NMI residents head to the polls to decide who will lead the islands through its challenges. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News.